So the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Burst Temple Church of God, Militant Pillar Ground of the Truth, located at 208 Locust Street, Lachlan, Ohio. Bishop Frank Downs is the pastor, and we bring you greetings in the name of Jesus. We hope and trust in today that something will be said or done to encourage your heart, amen, to let you know that Jesus Christ is the way. We want you to know that Burst Temple is a church large enough to serve you and small enough to notice you, this is a church with the open door. when he comes. Amen. Hallelujah. He may come today. He may come tonight or tomorrow. Amen. But one thing for sure, if you want to go back with him, you've got to be ready. Amen. Hallelujah. We're so glad to come into your homes. Amen. Whatever time you're witnessing this broadcast, as we always say, we trust and pray that something will be said or done to encourage your hearts. Amen. To let you know that there is a better way. Amen. Hallelujah. Life on the streets is rough. Hallelujah. But the Lord said, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That is a promise. He said that he would give you rest. Hallelujah. Amen. So sin is a burden. Sin is a yoke that, carry, that you carry on your back, and it weighs you down. Hallelujah. But the Lord said, come unto me. Hallelujah. I'll lift that thing off of you. Hallelujah. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Hallelujah. We want you to know that we love you here at Burst Temple. Amen. Hallelujah. And we're concerned about souls. Amen. Hallelujah. Because it's going to take the word of God. Amen. For you to see Christ. Hallelujah. To see his face in peace. Amen. We, we pray that uh, you will keep tuning in with us. Amen. Through the various weeks. Amen. We trust and pray that you enjoy our service. This is our Sunday morning worship. Amen. Because we mean nothing but good to you. Amen. And may God ever bless you and keep you. At this time, the Burst Temple Adult Choir is coming with their first selection, Thank You, led by Sister Sandy Jackson.
for waking me up this morning. Thank you for your touch, Lord. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for salvation. Lord, I just want to say thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Amen. We praise God for that first selection coming from the birth temple of Don't Cry. Thank you. Hallelujah. Lord, I just want to say thank you. I asked you for a lot of things down through the years, but Lord, I want to say thank you. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you for all you've done for me. Hallelujah. What I couldn't do for myself, thank you. Hallelujah. When I didn't have nobody to turn to, thank you. Hey, hey, hey. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, when I cried in the midnight hours, I just want to say thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We praise God for that song. Amen. Coming from the Burst Temple Choir this morning. Amen. He's good. Hallelujah. And he's worthy, more than worthy to be praised. We can wear that phrase out. He's worthy to be praised. He's more than worthy. Hallelujah. To be praised. Hallelujah. It's a shame, and then again, it's not. Hallelujah is the highest praise you can give him. Yeah. If there was one higher, I'd give it to him. Yeah. Hallelujah, but right now, all I know is hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to bring back to you the Burst of a Choir with the second selection. He lives. Amen. He lives. How do you know? He lives in my soul. I feel it on the inside. Hallelujah. I know he lives.
out for that second selection coming from the Burst of a Dog Choir. I know he lives. Amen. At this time, it's prayer time at Burst Temple. Amen. If there's a need in your life, this is a time to take it to the Lord in prayer. We know that there are those who don't have their mind on the Lord right now. But then there are those of us who have our minds on them. And we can take them to the Lord in prayer. Because see, when we've gone to our limits, God can go further. And it takes God to do the joy. Amen. But we can call their name up in prayer. Petition God about it. Hallelujah. Leave it in God's hand. And he will do the rest of the work. At this time, we're going to ask you to stand. Hallelujah. All hearts and minds toward God. Let us pray. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus. Once again, we come to you, Heavenly Father. First of all, for Father, asking you to forgive us of the sins we've committed, Lord. Heavenly Father, and after that, we ask you to bless, hallelujah. Oh, God, in your mighty name, hallelujah. Those, hallelujah, who don't know you, Lord. Those, hallelujah, who have gone astray, hallelujah. Father God, we know that they haven't gone too far from you, Lord. Uh, Lord God, that you're able to bring them back in. Uh, Father God, we pray today that you give them a mind, hallelujah. Oh, God, to turn from their sinful ways, uh, from their sinful habits. Uh, oh, Lord, give them a mind to turn around and say, yes, Lord. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, oh, God, we ask you to touch them, Lord. Uh, oh, God, from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Uh, hallelujah. Those that are sick and ill in body, Lord. Uh, Father God, we know you can be a doctor. Uh, hallelujah. That never lost a case. Uh, Father God, go into the hospital rooms, uh, into those bedrooms, Lord. Uh, hallelujah. Ease the pain, Lord. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, Father God, we know you're able today, Lord. Uh, hallelujah. We give it to your hands, Lord. Uh, hallelujah. Knowing that you're able to heal, Lord. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, Father God, as we call in your name, uh, we ask you to bless everyone that's represented here. Oh, God, in this congregation today, uh, hallelujah, touch each and every heart and home uh, that's represented here. Bless each family, Lord, uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, Heavenly Father, we ask you to see us through, Lord. Uh, Father God, if we ever give your name to praise, uh, these are all blessings we ask and give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Mm, to pray for me. Yeah. this time, we're going to bring to you, back to you, the Burst of Adult Choir with the final selection, after which our preacher for the morning will be before you in the person of our own Elder Charles Lockett. Amen. He's going to bring us the bread and the meat. Amen. Hallelujah. He's going to bring us what it takes to get us through here. Amen. At this time, the Burst of Adult Choir with the final selection, we are soldiers in the army, led by Sister Janet Matthews, after which Elder Charles Lockett will be coming with the bread.
this morning. Come on, you can do better. Let's give God praise this morning. Hallelujah. Say we're soldiers in the army of the Lord. Amen. We thank God for being here this morning. We give honor to our pastor and our assistant pastor and their companions. Thank God for everything that's been said and done up to this present time. We're glad to be here. Glad just to be saved. Yes. Sanctify and fill with the Holy Ghost. We want to dedicate this service this morning to Sister Francine Mitchell. That's Brother Randy and Sister uh, David's mother. So we want to dedicate this service to her this morning. Yes. I want to say something. You know, we're all here this morning. Yes. Some are saved. Yes. Some are not saved. Some are seeking. Yes. And some are looking. Yes. But the church ain't just for saved people. Huh? Amen. The church is for everybody. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Now some folk don't come just to get saved. They just want to come and say thank you. Amen. And it's something we all can do. Whether you're saved or unsaved. Whether you're skinny. Whether you're fat. Whether you're black or whether you're white. It's something everybody can do this morning. Will you stand on your feet this morning? Tell them thank you. Hallelujah. Stop. Hallelujah, thank you. Hallelujah, thank you. Oh. Hallelujah. Thank you. It don't take me and say to say thank you. Anybody and everybody can say thank you. Hallelujah. God bless you. We thank him this morning. As I was sitting there, I said, Lord, we all can do something together this morning. I said, this, say, Lord, I thank you. Thank God for everyone being here, especially to my family, my brother-in-law, my sister-in-law, and their friend. Man, I'm glad I can feel the spirit of the Lord. Yeah. I can feel God's presence. Something God's doing, amen? Yeah. We praise him for that. Won't be before you very long at all. You won't go to sleep on me. We're going to get up and get out the way. Go to Jonah, the first chapter. Jonah. The first chapter right. and the first verse. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah yes. and said, Arise and go to Nineveh, Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. Yes. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarish yes, from the presence of the Lord. And went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarish. So he paid the fare thereof, and went down into it, to go with them unto Tarish from the presence of the Lord. Uh -huh. We'll take our thought from those three portions of scripture. Get somebody by the hand. Yes, Lord. Say, neighbor. neighbor. He, was going, he was going, but going, going. the wrong way. He was going, but he was going the wrong way. Let's give God praise this morning. Hallelujah. It's a lot of people going. Amen. But they're going the wrong way. We want to give you a little history about Jonah before we go into our message this morning. But our message will be dealing with how that I don't care how long you go. How far you go, right. how deep you go, how wide you go, God always know where you at. Amen? When God spoke to Jonah, he went, but he went the wrong way. Jonah lived in Galilee. He was the first prophet of the Hebrew nation sent to the heathen nation. And you can find it in 2 Kings 14 and 25. When God had spoke to Jonah, in that particular time, there was a time when Israel was very bitter towards all pagan and heathen nations. How many know about bitterness? Amen. Here was a man that hated or despised every pagan a heathen nation uh -huh. because they had been so oppressed by the heathen nation it caused them to be bitter uh -huh. and Jonah when God spoke to him is a lot of times God tells us to do something but we just don't want to do it right. now Jonah reason for not wanting to go to Nineveh because he felt bitter yeah. oh he was a prophet too uh -huh. yeah. amen uh -huh. he was a same man but yet Jonah allowed his feelings to interrupt with the work of God. And a lot of times.
Sometimes you got to put your feeling aside to do the work of God. Now here, God was trying to show his divine love. See, a lot of times we become prejudiced. We feel like we're the only ones right. Jonah thought that we are the only ones right. But God had a message in sending Jonah to Nineveh. God wanted to show Jonah something. He wanted to show and prove to Jonah that he loved everybody. Amen. Let's go a little farther here. Jesus, in Matthew 12 and 39... Believe Jonas being one who was used greatly by the Father. Uh -huh. And Jonah's mission was to go to Nineveh. Uh -huh. Now, even though God told him what to do, he didn't seem to want to go that way. Uh -huh. Why did he want to go to Nineveh? <laughs> Let's talk about Nineveh for a little while. Right. Nineveh was a city of great sin. Everything you can imagine happened, happened in Nineveh. Oh, yeah. right. Anything is rotten and dirt. You know, they were so cruel that they would take folks that they caught in Nineveh uh -huh. for persecution uh -huh. and chop off their hands oh, yeah. and off their feet. Yeah. Oh, yes, they did. Yeah. They had all types of perverse sex going on in Nineveh. Yeah, right. It was almost like another Solomon uh -huh. and Gomorrah. But yet, God saw some good yes, did. Yes, did. down in Nineveh. Yes, the thing that we count as nothing is good in everybody. Yes. Will y'all help me this morning? Yes. See, a lot of times, if some don't look the way we think it should look or where it should be, then we don't want to fool with it. Yes. And no doubt, Joe said, look at here. Number one, the heathens. Uh -huh. Number two, it's wickedness down there. Uh -huh. But that's where God wants us to go to. A lot of us want to go, amen, to, down to Tarish, but God's saying go to Nineveh. Some of us don't mind going in places where there's now a whole lot of danger, a whole lot of activity going on. But God sent Jonah to the most wickedest place he can think of. And these people had no knowledge of who God was. Uh -huh. But yet, God in his impotent love looked on them and said, Jonah, I want you to go down to Nineveh and tell them to repent. Uh -huh. My God. Now, it's easy for preachers to be sent somewhere first class on an airplane to a big church, give them a nice offering, but it's time for us to start going in the right direction. Right. We got to start focusing in on the people who need the most help. Yeah. It's easy to go on down to Tarish yeah. and be comfortable on the ship. But it's somebody out there that needs help and we got to start going in the right direction. Right. Jonah was a believer that only Jews were saved. All right. All right. Ain't that right? All right? He thought that I'm going, but they ain't going to hear. A lot of times we go and say, well, so-and-so is pretty bad. They ain't going to hear. How you know what they going to do? You just going to do what God tells you to do. Amen? So, Joel said, okay. He heard the voice of God. And he rose, going in a total different direction. Uh -huh. But let me show you what happened there. Jonah got on the boat. Yeah. And everything that was on that boat served different gods. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's right. Is that right? Uh -huh. He did not know the very people he was running from was on that same ship with him. So what happened is while he decided to go to sleep down the bottom of the ship, God caused a storm to come. And the, the, the captain of the ship said, every man rise and call on your G, little G, O, D. And everybody on the ship began to call on their God. 
their little God. But all they called on could not help them. They say, something wrong here. Your God ain't answering. My God ain't answering. Your God ain't answering. What we gonna do? When the shipmates happened to go on down the bottom of the ship, who was down there? Joe was laying down there fast asleep. My God. And I guess they figured, well, none of our gods work. Let's find out what God he served. Since my God ain't working and your God ain't working, let's get a little bit about what kind of God he served. So they say, look, get up. Call on your God. Now here's people that Joe was against, right? They begin to toss stuff off the ship. Food. Clothes. They was trying to lighten the load so the ship can come to steal. But the more they tossed off, the more worse it got. So I said, what we gotta do? We gotta find out. What caused this thing? So they cast lots. And the lots fell on Joe. You know, God will pull you out. God will pull you out and point you out. So, oh, oh boy, you're the cause of this trouble. But see, Joe didn't tell him all the truth. He just said he was fleeing from his God. Right? He didn't tell him that God had sent him on a mission now. He only told him half truth. So they thought, well, we're going to feel sorry for him. We're going to try, we're going to try. In all your strength, you can't stop a storm of God. Sometimes God will call a storm to get folk to wake up. And I don't care how much you try to stop the ship from going back and forth. You can't stop it with your own power. Sometimes a storm will come in our kids' life. And we'll reach in and try to stop it. But you ain't got no power. Hallelujah. But tell me that as they thought, they said, uh, what are we going to do? We had tried everything. You know what Jonah did? This is going to blow your mind. Jonah said, throw me over, boy. What, but what was he doing? What was his purpose by saying, throw me over, boy? He went, you know something? Jonah was willing to die than to go to Nineveh. Y'all better think about it. He thought, well, this them kill me. Say, pick me up. Folks trying to join had a hiding place. He didn't have no hiding place. And they picked Jonah up and threw him overboard. And when they threw him overboard, the ship became still. But sometimes God got to cast you over to get your attention. God had a great fish waiting for Jonah. And it swallowed him up. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Now look at here. Here were people who he was totally against. Yeah. But they were willing to sacrifice their own life uh -huh. just to try to save Jonah's. There are all different type of heathen nations on that ship. Yeah. Right. So what I'm saying, sometimes other folk can help you out of your trouble. Don't you know, glory to God, that we ain't the only one saved? God got folk everywhere. And he had to let Jonah know that Jonah, I am a God that loves the whole world. He don't have no respect to person. So what happened? What happened? God threw him over. Yes. Jonah was in the well for three days and three nights, uh -huh. crying out to God. Yeah. See, no, God know how to get our attention. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Amen? When God got through with Jonah, uh -huh. the fish spit him up. Yeah. And what did God do? He gave Jonah a second chance. Yeah. Yeah. Now, even though Jonah was sorry in a fish, when he got spit up on dry land, he still had the same feeling. In his heart. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Even though he repented for what he was not going to do, when he got up out the fish, he still felt the same way. 
So God said, okay, you go. He went, but he didn't want to go. After all, after all the, I want to show you something here. After all the mercy God has shown towards Jonah, you would think he would have had some compassion and his heart would have been broken. And some folk is the same way. God will deliver them and deliver them and deliver them, but they don't have no mercy and no compassion on nobody. Sometimes God has pulled us out the pits of hell. We were down in sin and God cleaned us up. And some of us will sit up here in self-righteous, no compassion. And sometimes, help God, we forget where we came from. Joe did not realize how God showed mercy on him. And all God was saying was, Jonah, I want you to go and demonstrate my love, yeah. my mercy. Yeah. So Jonah said, I'm going, but I don't want to go. Yeah. So he went. And when he got there, he began to preach. Yeah. Told Nineveh to repent. Uh -huh. God was going to tear down the city. Yeah. He preached repentance, but yet he hadn't truly repented himself. And when Jonah began to preach, he thought that I'm going to preach and they ain't going to hear me. All right. They ain't going to listen. But the moment he began to preach, the king heard the word of God and came on down. He armored himself and he called a fast from the oldest to the youngest, from the richest to the poorest. Something begin to happen. God begin to deal with the heart. See, I'll tell you something. All you got to do is just tell folk. You ain't got to make them. You ain't got to shake them. You ain't got to crank them. Just tell them. So he told them. And when he told them, they heard the word of God. They heard what Jonah said. Here was a king, a rich king, a man who did not know anything about God. But just because Jonah preached, he came on down. He humbled himself down, took on sackcloth and ashes, and called for a fast. Mm, my God, my God. I don't know what John was saying and all that he said, but whatever he said, it got their attention. And tell me when Jonah got through preaching, he said, I'm going to go out here now and wait a while. They ain't going to repent. They're not going to be saved. But God begin to save the city. God begin to save the king, God, begin to say. It's something about the gospel. It's something about the word. It's power in the word. It's power in the word. Begin to happen. I don't care how high you are. I don't care how low you are. When the Lord get ready, you got to move. You can sit there with your hands in your lap. You can sit there with your eyes closed. But when the Lord, when the Lord get ready, you got to move. Is there something about God? 
I don't care what you are or what you're doing. When God begins to move, everybody. When God begins to move, the cows bow down and worship him. When God begins to move, the king of the people came on down. When God begin to move, tell me I don't care how strong you may feel. When God speak his word, you got to move. Yeah! God's word is powerful, it's quick, it's sharper. to ask sword and sometimes when God speak you try to hold it hold it but something begin to work on you something mm. ah. what happened what happened God spared Nineveh and Jonah got mad. Jonah got upset because Jonah didn't believe that God would save somebody that done like they done. Here are people who killed his people. Here are people that murdered his people. But God had mercy. God had mercy. God had mercy. And he said, Jonah, God so loved the world. Yes, he did. God so loved the world. He gave, he gave, he gave, he gave, he gave. His only begotten son, what God was trying to do God was trying to show Jonah I don't care how you look how your color looks where's your status in life I love you just like you are rich or poor I love you just like you are you ain't gotta be famous I love you just like you are even though down in sin God still loves them. God still working with them. What you mean, I like it. God was trying to show Jonah, have a little mercy. Have a little mercy. Just learn how to forgive. I know they wronged you, but learn how to forgive. Jonah was going, but he was going in the wrong direction. He was going, but he was going in the wrong direction. But God, when God, when God, when God got through with Jonah, he picked him up. Yes, he did. He turned him around. Yes, he did. And he started Jonah to go in the right way. If you're going the wrong way, it's time to stop, turn around. And start going the right way. If God say go north, you go north. If God say go south, you go south. But whatever you do, won't you show a little mercy? I don't care who God send you to. I don't care what they done. When you get there, show a little mercy. Just show a little mercy. I don't care how it looks, how bad it is. Show! 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 
This independently produced...